Hey everyone, this is Possible Audio, and today we're going to rebuild the output amplifier section for the left channel on my Marantz 2245. Okay, I forgot to film this first step, and it's the same for each channel, uh, but I'm going to show you this very first part on the right channel, and then we'll move back to the left. But basically, the first thing you do is take out these two amp um, output transistors. And you're going to mark it with a Sharpie, designating which one is the top one and which one is the bottom one. Because if you get these backwards, damage is going to happen. So be sure you mark these. And then is what you're going to do is you're going to take a Phillips and remove this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw. And then you're going to take needle nose pliers and grab a hold of each side of this transistor on both of them and just pull straight out. And they'll come right out of the sockets. And then you're going to remove this Phillips, which is on the bottom for the left channel. It'll be right down here in this hole. So you take this Phillips out, and this little bracket will fall out right here. You'll see it fall right out. And then, if there's any mica pieces still attached to the heat sink, peel those off. And then you're going to take a paper towel, and you're going to wipe the compound off of the heat sink and get it clean. So that is the very first step in doing this. So now let's move back to the left channel to do the rest. Okay, this shield's gotta come out. And I've already unscrewed it and had it out, but I put it back in just to show you. There's a screw down here, right down there that holds it in. And then there's a screw down inside, way down there, I'm pointing right at it. So you gotta get that one out. And then right here is a solder joint. And you're gonna have to hold your soldering iron on there. And once you get the screws out, you just push away from, push on the shield and it will separate that solder joint. Okay. It is out. And then after that, remove the Phillips. That's right here that goes into this standoff right here on this corner. Just Remove like the screws down low. There's one here and there's one still in it right there. I need to take that one out and there's one in it here I need to remove and there's another one I already took out right there. Once you do that, make sure this, these wires right down in here. You see those? That's where the output transistors plug in. Make sure that that's pulled away from the heat sink. Okay, very, very important. There is a small Phillips right here. Remove that. There's another one right here. Remove that Phillips. Already took it out. Then you're gonna take a small wrench. You're gonna remove these standoffs. This standoff and that standoff from the heat sink, okay? They are already removed this standoff. And I'm taking this one off now. And again, we are on the bottom. You can even see the uh, one of the feet right there. But this is a five millimeter wrench. So be sure and do this so you don't damage the board when you go to pull the heat sink up and out. I'm gonna try to do this on camera. Let's see here. we go look at that it's coming right out Bloop. there we go now that's that's the hard part of this honestly look at this we can get to both sides of our board to service it now look at that awesome okay my fellow air breathers i decided to replace all the potentiometers there's two on each output board. And it's what you need to do is take your multimeter after it's out and measure between this pin and this pin the resistance. Then you're gonna measure between this pin and this pin the resistance and adjust the potentiometer until it matches the resistance reading you got on the original. And that'll put you really close to where you need to be and possibly save you a lot of damage. This is the differential pair on the output board and each output board for the left channel and right channel has this. And this is made out of two parts. 
It is two transistors. These are KSA 992 FBUs. And I carefully matched it using my multimeter. It's got a HFE setting on it. And out of a pack of 10, it was pretty easy to do. They were all really close in value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this silicone heat transfer compound, apply just a little bit of it to the flat face, join them together, and they're gonna be held with heat shrink tubing assortment from Hobo Freight. So this is what it looks like with a little bit of heat transfer compound on the uh, flat face of one of them. And it takes very little. You don't want a goopy mess. Turned out awesome. And see, you can, you can barely see the heat compound See a little bit of white between them. See, it's not a big giant mess. That's what you want. So now I got to bend the pens to match this one. So let's do that. Got the pens pretty good. So now we're going to put the new one in and get it soldered. So I got the left channel output amplifier rebuilt. Wasn't a whole lot to do to it. But I replaced this cap right here. It was originally a big brown one and it tested fine. But this is a modern new cap and you know what? We're having a good time. So I replaced it. Down here, this electrolytic and the one right behind it these were out of spec by over 25%. This was a tandem. I replaced it with an electrolytic, and it was out of spec by about 25%. And then we also replaced our differential pairs. And we also came in here and replaced these potentiometers. And the originals were fine, but I'm having fun. So they got new ones. And then down here, this R6. 767 this blue one it was originally a carbon comp and it was out by 40 percent as well as r768 it was a carbon comp so now they're both metal and let's see here i went ahead and replaced this one with a this was a carbon film right down in here and it got replaced with a a 1% high tolerance metal. I probably, in hindsight, wouldn't do that one because the original tested fine. It was a carbon film. So I wouldn't worry about that one unless you're just feeling exuberant. Okay, so that's all we did to this board. Um, very happy with how it turned out. Now that everything was out of the way, I decided this is a good time to tackle the muting circuit. This just goes, bloop, flips up. I replaced this one, this cap, and this cap. That was easy. And this is an FM detector board. Not sure what it does, but it detects FM. So, I still got to do this one, but that's next. I'm going to replace this cap, this cap, this cap, this axial cap, this one, and this one. So, six caps total on that board. Nice thing is, easy to get to. Okay, I got the amplifier currently standing on its end, but I had it in the upright position earlier, just like if you were listening to it, and I slid this heat sink back in through the top. And then I put in this Phillips screw and that Phillips screw. Now leave them really loose. Only thread them in about three threads because when you come around to this side, you're gonna need to lift this board in order to get your uh, standoffs back in. See the standoffs we took out earlier? So you're gonna have to be able to lift each corner of the board and there's plenty of, you know, um, clearance to do that, leaving those screws loose. So put your standoffs in 
And then after you get those in, you can run your Phillips in each corner on this side, then come back around and tighten up the two Phillips on that side. All right, I got my standoffs back in place. And let me show you. There's, see? That's why you want to leave those other ones loose so you can get in there to screw them in because it's a tight fit, especially this one. All right, I got my four Phillips screws in each corner. This one and this one, same for the bottom side. Got them tightened. Now you're gonna install this one down here and this one. And whenever you get these in, leave them loose, okay? Don't tighten those up. Leave them very loose, actually. Because you're gonna need all the wiggle room you can to get these in down here, this one and this one. And once you get all four of those started, tighten those up. After that, then we're gonna proceed to fish these wires, these sockets, back up into the heat sink and install our transistors. So these are the output transistors. And there's something I wanna point out and you may have seen this in other videos, the distance from the pins to the mounting hole on one end is shorter than from this to that mounting hole. Can you see what I mean? So they're kind of, they're only gonna go one way. That's what I'm getting at. And I already slathered it up with some of our heat transfer compound. And I'm just using Q-tips to put on a very thin layer. You don't want to get all goopy. Being goopy does not help. It just makes it look nasty. And then, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mica piece I'm gonna use right here, and I'm gonna place it right onto the transistor, just like so. And then, I'm gonna goop up this side of it. So let me do that. We got the goopy goop on the mica piece. And we're gonna install this one first. This is the top one, this is the bottom one. Remember, don't get these backwards. That'll be very bad. It'll blow smoke if you do. Okay, I've got it plugged in. This is the top one. And if you look down in here, I took my chopstick and I really can't show you exactly but you're just going to hold your chopstick down here as a backup to keep the socket from sliding out of the heat sink it's not hard takes a little bit of finesse and um, it'll go right in so let me get the screws in it and then we'll do the other side it's in place and if you notice the um, heat compound isn't gooping out and making a massive mess there's a little bit around the perimeter and it's your choice to wipe that off with a paper towel, but this is what you want to see. It's just enough to do the job without being too much to make, make a big mess. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over, the whole receiver. We're just going to flip it over. You can, of course, stand it on the end, but I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to put the bottom one in. Okay, this is the bottom side. So you're going to have to work past these two items right here we'll deal with this later just make sure you don't you know try not to mess with this much if this breaks it's gonna suck so just try to get these out of the way so you can reach the socket and you're gonna get the socket into place and then we'll put that transistor in and once that's bolted in then we'll come back and mess with this so there's a round piece of Formica that goes against the heat sink that this is gonna bolt through. And this right here, this temperature thing, I put a little bit of compound behind it where it meets the uh, heat sink. Uh, this part's gonna be a little messy. You're just gonna have to kind of wipe it up when it's done, but there's no way around it. But just it'd be sparing, it'll work out fine. And then, this is the bracket that holds it. And when I get this in, it's all going to make sense in a second. It's a little bit of a balancing act, but we can do it. All right. We got it back together. You can kind of see how that goes, that little loop 
that little hook goes through a loop and it holds that piece against the heat sink. That's why you need a little bit of compound on it. Um, you don't need to monkey fist this. Just snug it down. It'll be good. Um, don't get too aggressive with these wires. They'll break off and then you're going to have other problems. Also, while we're here, the output transistors, the screws for those, just snug them. They go into plastic. You don't need to monkey fist those. Just, just snug them down. EMI shield is installed. Watch out for the wires that butt up to it from uh, the FM detector board and the muting board. We got a screw, one screw down here for it. And then another screw right down in that cavity. You're probably going to have to heat this solder joint to get these screws to line up. That's it. Let's test it out and let's see if we can't make some smoke. Okay, everyone. Um, excuse the poor lighting. And um, I haven't turned it on. I'm kind of scared to. But I got everything set. I got a 40 watt uh, dim bulb in. So, uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if this works. Let's got our power switch on. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see this. Let me scoot it up here. Move that back a hair. There you go. So, here we go. Okay, that is... A great sign. Relay circuit engaged. And <laughs> looks like we're we got sound out of both speakers. He hit So, we don't want to get monetized, so that's why I'm kind of going quick, but look at this, so this is awesome, let me turn it down, so <clears throat> I'm going to let this sit here and run, and I'm going to hook up, um, voltmeters to the uh, left channel output section that we just rebuilt and uh, monitor the bias and DC offset but hey our dim bulb is dim <laughs> that is that's a relief because I'm like I don't want to have to tear that whole thing back apart but it looks like we're, we're it's working guys um, I'll keep you updated but I'm going to let this run on my bench for probably a few days or a week or something. And I want to compare the left channel that we rebuilt to the right channel we haven't. And just see if I can't hear any audible differences. So that's it. Thanks for being here. This is Possible Audio.